Hey guys, what's up? It's oh, JB good. Illusion, and I would like to first thank K Budsman. I, I do believe that is your name for letting me know about some of the movement or formations in this game. I'm kind of iffy on. I'm kind of trying to experiment with a bunch of stuff. He let me know of a way that I could always move my troops, you know, actually forward in a straight line instead of the, having them go zigzag or diagonal paths it has to do with the forward arrow key and groups believe it or not so I'm gonna attempt a little bit of that when you know we go up we gotta recruit some slayers first and Ungrim needs to spend his next rank um I'm not really big on making him a power um just a powerhouse just yet I would rather improve everyone else I would also, I'm going to take Route Marcher just to get him to move around a little bit better out here. I think it's really necessary. I think it's really useful just for, you know, everyone involved. Mount Squighorn. Also, something that I learned very, very recently. Okay, we need that Siege Workshop, but once we get to working on these other areas, let's, we, we gotta make that money. Once we get to working on these other areas, we're going to have to make sure to bump up the garrisons. I was talking to... Oh, Barak Var. What would you like? Military Alliance? Sure, pay us my... Whoa, wait. Yeah, give us the money. See, the fun thing about Military Alliances is... Sometimes you can just help them out a little bit. Sometimes, eh. We'll see how it works out. It's honestly the two of us versus the green skin, so... I must fulfill my slayer oath. We're also going to throw him into March. Yeah, we got a little bit further. He's a dwarf, and his army is pretty full up right now, so... Yeah, that's how that works out. But what we really need to focus on... I'm going to tell everyone this. Um, watch rooms and guard holes to improve the garrisons of your areas to help repel attacks. It's really, really important later on in the game, from what I've learned, and apparently we need to work on our public order. We apparently need some bars, because that's all dwarves need, just some nice bars. But what we could do is throw out one of these, I know there's one somewhere, boom! We can venerate our ancestors to improve public order, Hopefully that'll help a bit next turn. We'll see. We also have our Thane buddy right here. Or no, our other Lord. And there should be a Thane right there. He is. I have the forge fires what we could do is send our Thane out here without too much trouble. And just figure out what's going on. Like We could send him out here right now and have him mess with some things. He is going to... Huh, I don't exactly know what effect he's going to bring down upon here. He could affect public order, he could affect growth, but apparently he reduces the amount of chaos and vampiric corruption. Is that on... Let's take a look at him for a second. He does improve our campaign line of sight, so I'm thinking he's more of a buffer that we keep with one of our main armies to improve the line of sight, and just in case, we should keep him in our own group. But, at least we have him out here to watch out for any green skin activity. I think that's really important. Barak Var is... well, Barak Var is done. So we're going to have to slowly move into these territories. We're going to have to watch out, mostly for, I believe that's, um, Grimgore. Yeah, that's Grimgore. We're going to have to watch out for Grimgore. He is not fun. All right. End turn. Are there any more, um, incredibly wise things I have to say? Not really. I don't have too much. But as this continues, we will have stuff. Your warriors range deep into hostile lands, but all's not well. There are dark omens aboard, as if the shadow of some honored god was watching from the evil moon above. The army is fettered by more sleeves glare. Nice. The evil moon is also made of warp stone. 
Uh, we could get Warfeather, which is leadership plus six if we drop 1500. We are currently just swimming in money, so we're going to do it. And he's still out here. He's watching. What we could have him do is we'll, we'll just do this so I can show you what you can do with your heroes when you get them. He's going to attack the defenses of the settlement. There's a 45% chance of a good outcome. 55% chance of a negative. It's almost a coin flip. So hero failure really isn't that big of a thing, but hero wounded is a big thing. Basically, on that 15% chance, if he fails, he's going to be removed from all action for quite a few turns, and that's never fun. We're going to do it anyhow, just to show you. And... 15% chance he is critically failed and he is now removed from combat. We can get him back, but this, this does not bode well. That's what I get. Alright, we're going to improve our public order since we need it. Apparently, nepotism is not a dirty word in dwarven society. The guilds encourage it, for family honor is promised. So we'll make everybody a little bit more happy. Due to that decree in public order, everybody's up plus one. I'm guessing they did not hear about their thing. Mount Squirkhorn is going to get this guard tower. They need it. Because um, Grimgor could attack from either side. Karaza Crack is going to get one as well. And we'll at least have a nice defense. You know? So we'll have him move back, and he's going to go yes. back into Karazakrak, and we're going to shore up our defenses, because I really didn't expect our hero to die like that. But just remember, people, every time you use your hero, it's a risk. <laughs> oh, God. Alright, here's something interesting that we've run up upon. A cloaked stranger from the mist-shrouded land of Albion. Albion is a setting in Warhammer that's pretty much all but... I I'm pretty sure no one cares about it anymore, but... There are Truthsayers, and I forget the darker faction. But regardless, there was a very, very cool war in Albion for power and influence. The dwarves, the humans, chaos, vampires, everyone was in there with the Truthsayers and the dark somethings. And, basically, I do believe the dwarves came out the victors, and they got some of their ancient treasures back. So we have one of the darker rep representatives from Albion saying, Hey, I could come here, we could up your chaos corruption, and you could give us money. Or we could safeguard the us, and we have a reduction in vampiric and chaos. The thing about it is, if we had our hero... We could say, screw it, give us the corruption, and then he'll just bring it down in the next couple of turns while we're turtling up. But, because I'm, I've been being an idiot, oh, that early game money is so good. Early game money. We, we allowed him to do it. I'm sorry, ancestors. I just wanted to show you guys that really quick, because it's a very interesting question as to what you're going to do. And sometimes it will work out to your benefit, other times not. We're going to bump that up because, hey, we got the money. And we're going to work on increasing our cash flow. Anyhow, until something cool happens. Alright, so some cool stuff did happen. Uh, if you cannot tell, our siege workshop is finished and we can start working on our siege machines. It's nothing amazing, but grudge throwers... These, this isn't the height of dwarf engineering, but grudge throwers are amazing in combat, and they're really, really useful early game. Because... I am the Slayer King. They can hit people from so far away, and they're really amazing, so everybody's gonna have two. That's just how it's going to work out. And I am super happy about it. He's still getting experience, which I think is really great. I guess governing the peoples. I guess every once in a while he has to knock some dwarves around. So Barak Var is actually still alive. 
surprising. And what we could do is double around. We've detected a force belonging to the Greenskins attempting to lay ambush. Alright. Also, um, how you can catch people sneaking into your lands are ambush stances. Or ambush... I'm, I'm really saying ambush stances because I am a Mordheim player. And boom, ambush. Basically, you move yourself out there, you hide, and if someone comes past you, you have a chance of going up and attacking them. Instead of playing the running around trying to catch them game, which is honestly a terrible, terrible idea. Because for some reason, I always fail that. So the Dwarven Tinker Shop, we upgrade that as well. Despite their stubby fingers, dwarves create excellent, intricate, and delicate clockwork for tools and other apparatuses. We're going to need that because most of our apparatuses hopefully will be from war. Hmm, negative 5% to recruitment costs. Dwarven resolve for infantry units. Boop! Oh, we're working on that resolve because given my playstyle, it's necessary. We also have the gate completed. Let me just show you. We have our garrisons, right? So, if you pay attention, Karag... Karaz, a crack, I'm sorry, has some hammers, some long beards, miners, thunderers, quarrelers, and a grudge star. That's really good. That's our main hold. So they're going to have more of a garrison than the other groups. This, uh, the Pillars of Grungi has dwarf warriors, some miners, and some crossbowmen. That kind of sucks. But since we boosted this area up, We've got some warriors with great weapons, some normal warriors, three groups of miners, some crossbowmen with great weapons, some normal crossbowmen, and we have a grudge thrower now. It is really, really important to build up your defenses. It is necessary. Because this is the... what was it called again? The end times. This is the end times. And chaos will attack. And so will everyone else. So having these defenses in, is incredible. Because you go from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 normal units. And then you also have the Grudge Thrower, which is incredible. The Grudge Thrower could take out a unit in and of itself during a battle. So, just to show you guys that, siege workshop's done. We could bump it up when necessary. We have to move this up to a tier 3. But when we could bump that up, we could get some cannons and some thunderers. Sad thing is, I did not set it up in the appropriate place, I believe. We're not going to be getting any organ guns or iron drakes or flame cannons anytime soon. That's my bad. That's stupid placement on my part. But later on, we'll work it out. We will 150% work it out. Because we're going to have more land later on. We need to take, bla take back um, Death Pass. That's also going to be very, very big on my list. And if you haven't noticed, we still have... We're rolling in money. Ha, <laughs> we're in the money. Alright. Now, back to waiting a couple turns, and hopefully we'll be able to get a fight in at some point in time fairly fairly soon. Alright, we're back, and the important news is Grimgore is all the way over here. We got, I guess you could say, alerted by our gyrocopter pilots that he's working on the Border Princess for some odd reason. We've got the guys from Barakvar... Moving in on this territory, I really don't want them to take it, so we're going to move in, and spoiler alert, our boy Yanni Redman is back for action. I'm happy about it, and you will see the very importance of grudge throwers. I mean, this is going to take like five seconds, but hey, whatever. But the grudge throwers are so important early game, because they're so useful. I do not remember Bogurb... Bone Crusher. I do remember um, Manghide Manflare though. He's one of the guys around here. 
He's one of the guys who could have been a special character, but I guess he got bumped over for well. Grimgor Ironhide, which he should, and Ozzig. Uh, okay, Ozzig, yeah. I'm still iffy on Ozzig because I really don't like him as an orc. I really don't like him as a person either. I'm sorry. I'm just that guy. But this is hopefully going to be a piece of cake. We will attempt to use some of the movement we were taught earlier. They've got a couple archers. I mean, we could just smash them. Fun fact, heroes are also incredibly useful in these combats. I love the use of heroes. For example, the vampire counts can have a hero that's ridiculously good at close combat and magic, and can also bolster the amount of magic that you can use, but since the dwarves are kind of... They, they use rune magic, they don't use magic. Since they use some different stuff, these guys have the cool special rule of basically being able to deploy anywhere not within this zone. Actually, can they deploy in this zone? Nope. Anywhere not in that zone, kind of like tabletop. I like that. You can take something in tabletop where they basically drill underneath the ground and they try to find where they should pop up and attack the enemy camp. And whenever I did that, I basically wound up like right next to the guys it was bad for me as i said before we we're going to work on our groups because we need to do that there's one group he is going to be in a group with these guys he is going to be honestly i think we should keep him Maybe just in the back, protecting these guys. These guys are going to be in a group, of course. And you hold shift to just pick at random, or just pick your guys. Alright. He's going to be protecting these guys, but he also... If we did pick up the ability, he would increase everyone's leadership. So... If we click these two guys and we hold forward, boom, they go straight forward. One. Isn't that awesome? I find that really actually very, very useful. Thank you very much again for pointing that out to me. And then we'll have him go into a guard stance. I do believe that they should be cool against the charge. We'll see how it works out, but as you can see, the grudge throw is already working on these guys. We're opening up with the shots. I'm not really too worried about the grudge where the grudge throwers are shooting, per se. Just as long as they shoot someone. These guys have shields, so it's going to protect them more from the arrow fire. That's so why I'm not too worried, and we're going to have these guys start moving. They're going to hit them from the side at some point. These guys are still going fine, and he's essentially here just to protect our siege weapons. These guys are holding up alright, they should. You come in here, you guys move in, and these guys are going to move around, and get these guys from behind. And he's taking them on single-handedly. Let's take a look at this. They're only gobbies. He'll be just fine. Just smack him around, because gobbies kind of suck. Focus on them, and the other grudge thrower will, of course, focus on them. We still got decent shooting. The great thing about this is they have not broken the line. And we're going to have these warriors come around and hit these guys up. Can we get a little bit of a charge in? A little bit of a charge. 
Nice, you can see some dudes moving around. Our lord is following them when really he should get in this charge right here. And... there he goes! All up in there. We're doing good, we're doing good, how's this? Where are the miners? I'm not saying dwarves are slow, but you guys are slow. The good thing is... He, he can do this. He can hold them. I mean, that goblin did just this is Sparta him, but there was a this is Sparta right back. And yeah, easy. Grudge throwers are awesome, and dwarves are awesome. And the battle. Save. Oh, that feels good. We lost... What, 11... Okay, let's go 6, 9, 12, 13, plus 11, 24. We lost 24 dwarves. That's that's not bad at all. Grudge Thor took out 62. The other one took 25, 23, 17, 5, 18. And, of course, our Runesmith got 27 goblins. That was pretty impressive. And our fighter squad that did lose the most got 38 of them. That's pretty impressive. And they lost 237 opponents. 237 warriors. That's really awesome. And thank you again for telling me how to move up forward. Because I like a defensive... I'm a very defensive person. Maybe when you get like Empire Cavalry and some other stuff, then you can go full offense and you can figure out some really nice stuff. So... Here are two things. One, we didn't get much from that. Two, at least he gained a level. Three, we're going to loot and occupy for the chance. I love how this is Slayers, by the way. We're going to loot and occupy, occupy for the chance of a magic item. Hopefully it'll be good. Maybe it might not be. We'll see what it is fairly soon. And the first thing we're going to build... Oh, we need to be level two. Hunting Lodge would be nice. We could make some furs, and it also increase growth in the region. Warriors, uh, we're pretty good now. But what we will do is we'll work on that fur trade, and hopefully because of the growth, we could just move this really quick and start building defensively. So this isn't too bad. They're negative 30, mostly because... We took over the region, I can understand that. And this is the next thing that we're going to take over. But right now we're going to be slightly defensive. Cause well, you know, we have I'm not gonna die standing here. A not so nice person looming around us. You know. That's kinda how that's going. So, hopefully you learned a lot. I hope everything will work out. This episode is kinda going to be Slightly sure. Ah, you know what? Let's work on him. We're of course going to do inspiring presence because we just need our dwarves to fight to the last man, and we'll go for one more turn. We'll see what happens. Oh, okay. Yo, come on, Grimgor. I know you want it. Come on. Come on. Yo, step to us. And we've got our boy. He's. Ooh, he, he already sacked him. Thanks, I guess? So the cool thing is, if we build up a good enough relationship with Barak Var, then they could wind up just joining us. Ooh! Here's a nice little grudge. Beheld in Grimnir's seething sight. Bugman's Brewery, Bugman's an awesome guy by the way, was once the greatest of all brew houses where the fabled Bugman's XXXXX was created, a few casks of which still exist, but it all ended when the Groby fell upon the fortified brewery, enslaving and killing the Bugman clan, and worst of all, drink the ale. Such an atrocity is a grudge that can never truly be settled. Go and slay Greenskins to solve this open wound. We get a lot of money for that. And, well... You might as well take the chance. What level is... He's level 5. So what I'm thinking is we have 
him go out. We'll do another quick fight. I mean, might as well. Oh, well. That's pretty crazy. Should we occupy this land? Loot and occupy, loot and occupy. Yes. We're not gonna get anything important, but... One red. We'll have him... be on defense right here. Moving. And then we'll just chill out. What can we build here? That would increase growth, which would be very, very nice. That's pretty much what we need to focus on for the time being. Growth, then we build up the defenses, and then we'll take Iron Rock, Karagdorn, and hopefully Black Crag very soon. So I'm JB Illusion. Thank you guys for watching. We've turtled up. We're slowly moving forward, and we have another level. What? Um, Lords of the Deep is kind of alright. It's for using the special green skin and dwarf rule of going into the deep tunnels that the dwarves built and that the goblins sometimes now occupy. We're going to take Axe Lord just to increase melee defense for warriors and miners. I think that's really important. And thank you guys for watching. Hopefully in the future, Barak Bar will tag team with us. What is this? Okay, they can kill that Gobby. Or Groby, I'm sorry. But hopefully in the future, we will somehow be able to take over or take back the majority of this land. Start making some money and start doing really well. So thank you for watching. I'm JB Illusion. If you have any hints for troop movement, any things to like keep everyone more in form, please hit me in the comments down below. If you like the video, like. And, hey, if you just have anything else to say, please tell me. And, peace. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye-bye.